evolution on a time frame short enough for a single human life to take notice. These changes usually occur over many lifetimes. The gradual drift of creatures DNA to best suit their environment. But once in the 1700s, humans witnessed evolution with their own eyes and they caused it. This metamorphism coincided with humans' rapid industrialization. We began burning coal on levels never seen before and its byproducts rapidly changed the landscape, not just for humans, but for animals that share the planet with them. The peppered moth, biologically known as Biston betularia, was one of those animals. Getting its name from its speckled white and black colouring, designed to camouflage the moth while it lay on lichen cover tree bugs. A black variant was first observed in 1811, many decades into the Industrial Revolution. At first, the mutation was rare, but humans' influence on the environment grew and so did their numbers. By 1895, 98% of the peppered moth had this black colouring. Surely, this black colouring would leave them exposed, making them easier to spot for hungry birds. In reality, these moths had adapted to be harder to spot in this newly industrialized world, once stained by soot. The rate we have been spewing these pollutants into our atmosphere has only risen since this discovery. Our carbon emissions have risen from 1600 million metric tons to 36,000 million metric tons since 1865. And despite various efforts to control this, the numbers are not declining. Human population and development are continuing to outspace our efforts to curb carbon dioxide emissions. Humans are pumping the world's atmosphere with a gas that will eventually render the world unlivable for many if some action is not taken. Before discussing about climate change, let me start with two examples of the recent years. Temperatures over ocean surfaces were so high in 2020 that 80% of the ocean areas experienced at least one marine heat wave till date. During such times, the average temperature of the ocean surfaces rise by 5 to 7 degrees Celsius above normal. Climate change in Texas makes storms worse and more unpredictable. Global warming and higher temperatures lead to increased evaporation. Eventually, this evaporation leads to increased precipitation. At certain times when temperatures are cold enough, this precipitation is snowfall. People in Texas face severe hardships during this cold storm. Nowadays, the people are considering this climate change as a major issue. The world leaders along with many other unions are trying to find out the best solution for the climate change. Before understanding the seriousness of this problem, first let us try to understand the reason for this problem. The, when we come to the reason, the major reason is due to the presence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, especially in enormous amount. The statistics says that in the past 70 years, the population has been tripled. In order to meet the energy needs of these people, we burnt fossil fuels. The burning of fossil fuels release carbon dioxide in an enormous amount. These carbon dioxides in the atmosphere captures the sunlight, which in turn increases the global's mean temperature. The statistics says that the global's mean temperature has increased 1.2 degrees Celsius above the baseline, which was measured in 1980s. And the scientist predicts that when the, this temperature difference reaches 1.5 degrees Celsius, it may uh, cause an permanent damage to the Earth. News such as Europe is currently colder than the Arctic, Millions of people are likely to suffer worsening of food and water shortage are few examples of climate change. Due to rapid warming, water expands and ice cap melts leading to rise in sea levels. Reports suggest that entire coastal cities could be underwater within 80 years. We all have experienced and have seen disasters happening all around us. These disasters occur frequently nowadays and are also leading to severe hardship. So, controlling CO2 has now become the need of an heart. We will have to make sure that the survival of the next generation is important. To do this, what if we could just suck the carbon dioxide right out from the emissions rather than sending the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere? Yes, this method is termed as carbon capture. In most industries, the method of post-combustion capture is followed, that is, the carbon dioxide is captured after the fossil fuels is burnt. 
In this method, the carbon dioxide is removed from the flue gas that has carbon dioxide, water vapor, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides mostly. Carbon capture can prevent 80 to 90 percent carbon emissions from entering into the atmosphere. The IPCC estimates that carbon capture and storage has the potential to make up between 10 percent to 55 percent of the total carbon mitigation efforts until 2100. The captured carbon is often stored underground in a process called geological sequestration which involves injecting carbon dioxide into underground rock formation. It is stored as a supercritical fluid meaning it has properties between those of a gas and a liquid. When carbon dioxide is injected at depths it will remain at a supercritical condition as long as it stays in excess of 31.1 degrees Celsius and a pressure in excess of 72.9 atmospheric conditions. While this might be an okay solution, no one knows for sure what the environmental impact could be if the carbon dioxide were to leak out into the environment in large quantities. In some instances, leakage of carbon dioxide underground has been shown to increase plant mortality, reduce growth and create potentially severe localized damage to the ecosystem. For this to be a viable, safe option, carbon dioxide would need to remain stored for hundreds of years or even indefinitely and the feasibility of this is not certain. Other methods of storing carbon include sinking it in deep below the ocean at depths under 3500 meters where it turns into a slushy material that will sink to the ocean floor under the amount of pressure. But this method is largely untested and again that are concerns about what this would mean for marine life and uncertainty on whether or not the carbon dioxide could eventually make the way back into the environment. 25% of the global greenhouse gas emissions come from electricity and heat production. Transportation, generally industry and agriculture collectively make up around 60% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Ocean water can be made drinkable. No more rusting of metals, glowing wallpapers in homes, and bionic humans. Graphene. Graphene is a semi-metal. It is nothing but carbon, more specifically an allotrope of carbon. Dr. Constantine and Professor Andre Gunn discovered graphene back in 2004 when they are working with graphite transistor and were awarded the Nobel Prize for their discovery in the year 2010. As of now, graphene is a material of high cost but of many application. Graphene is the thinnest as well as the strongest material. It is of two dimensional material and with one atom thickness. Did you know it is the strongest than diamond yet stretchable? This material carries electricity more quickly and precisely and more efficiently than any other materials. It is also better than the currently used silicon processor. Graphene has the capability to bring a massive change in the electric and electronic fields as it provides almost nil resistance to the flow of current. By using graphene, we can make batteries with 10 times more electrical retention capacity. The most important property of graphene is that it expands when cooled and shrinks when heated. Graphene is the only material to possess this type of property. It is the most impermeable membrane as of now and it will not allow even the smallest gas, helium, to pass through it and hence can be used as fuels for the futuristic electric vehicles. Construction of space elevator can be made possible by using graphene. By mixing graphene with concrete, a super strong and durable material for the construction purposes can be obtained. Along with this, graphene can be used in making chips to form supercomputers. Com they help to resolve the problem of converting ocean water to be consumable one. We also find application of graphene in the field of medicine. Graphene can be used to detect the cancer cells. The only thing that remains is commercialization of the graphene and we are here with the solution to that. Now we have an idea of utilizing the captured carbon from industrial exhaust or vehicular exhaust to some useful products such as carbon nanotubes, activated charcoal and many more instead of storing it into deep under the seabed or rocks. Our project mainly focuses on the converting captured carbon to graphene. The carbon can be captured from the industrial exhaust by various methods such as absorption, adsorption, membrane gas separation, hydrate gas technology and many more. We capture the carbon from industrial exhaust by adsorption process. The captured carbon is then converted to graphene. The conversion of carbon to graphene has also got various methods. The method which we uh, adopted for converting the captured carbon to graphene is a simple thermal reduction process. 
the carbon dioxide is let into a reaction chamber made up of glass or quartz. Inside the reaction chamber, the molten magnesium is placed in a pochelian boat which acts as a uh, reducing agent. The carbon dioxide re reacts with the reducing agent and gets converted into carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide now undergoes second thermal reduction to form graphene. This complete reaction takes place at an ambient pressure and a temperature of 850 degrees Celsius. The graphene that is obtained contains some amount of magnesium and magnesium oxide as impurities. There are also some number of biological impurities which can be removed. Thus, the process is carried out. The graphene is treated with 0.1 mole of hydrochloric acid to remove magnesium impurities, where magnesium reacts to with chlorine to form magnesium chloride, which then can be easily removed. As graphene treated with hydrochloric acid, its pH decreases to so the graphene is washed several times with deionized water. Then it is treated with ethanol to remove biological imp impurities. Finally, the graphene is dried under high vacuum conditions. After purification process, the graphene we obtain consists traces of oxygen, magnesium. About 7% of oxygen and 2% of magnesium can be found in the total atomic weight percentage of the graphene. Overall, the purity of graphene is greater than 90% of the graphene and that is obtained uh, is black graphene. It can absorb the light of all wavelength and can act as a very good conductor of electricity. This new strategy is for the first time gives us the three more, more needed properties for the superior electrodes and supercapacitors. They are high specific area, high conductivity and a relatively high density.